New Door, New Beginning by Animation Nut. This is a one chapter story. When Casita rebuilt and the magic flourishing in every brick and tile, the community celebrated like they never had before. Music and laughter bounced off the walls, lanterns were hung and candles were lit as the sun dipped below the horizon, allowing the first stars to wink in the faded black sky. Bruno had long since retreated into a dark corner, overwhelmed by the presence of so many people, but not willing to depart from his family. His fingers twisted in his lap, his posture hunched, and he gave weak, tired, hesitant smiles to those who were oblivious to his body language and approached him. Antonio was half asleep on Parse's back, his limbs hang dangling limp off of the jaguar's body. When the little boy whispered to his deal, Parse promptly strode over to Bruno, who recoiled as the fierce predator came near. He relaxed when Antonio reached for him, blinking sleepily, and warmth and affection flooded Bruno's green eyes. He pulled his youngest nephew into his lap, and Antonio sagged against his chest, his tiny fingers curling into the fabric of Bruno's runa. Dolores leaned against Mariano's side, his arm tucked over her shoulders. A headache pulsed at her temples, the music and overlapping chatter grating against her eardrums. She knew Ulietta would be able to heal her pain in an, in an instant, but her tear looked just as worn out as she, and Dolores didn't want to bother her. Augustine held his wife close as he gazed amongst the party, partying dance people, seeking out his children and his family. The Madrigals had been just as enthusiastic as the others when the celebration kicked off, but as the hours wore on, the energy drained from their bodies. Habits and behaviours, especially ones developed over the course of several years, were hard to shake. The townspeople had been so kind to help them rebuild their home, and the Madrigal children did not have the heart to put a stop to their joy, even though most of them were dead on their feet. None of them said a word in complaint, and with great guilt Abuela knew it was because of her. She had ingrained in them, all of them, that their duty to the community was paramount far more important than anything else. She had led them to believe, however unintentionally, that their own happiness came last, but no more. Firmly but kindly, Abuela dismissed the townspeople, giving heartfelt gratitude for their support as she saw them out. There were disappointed groans and displeased mumblings of a fiesta cut to an abrupt end, but the shining relief in the eyes of her family was a shield against the scattered unhappiness. Her duty was no longer solely focused on the town she founded. From now on, her beloved familia would have her undivided attention, in all ways that they deserved. When the final person stepped across Casita's threshold, the doors clicked shut and the Madrigals immediately released exhausted moans that they had been holding back. I thought they would never leave, said Isabella, sighing, the flowers in her hair drooping. They didn't leave said Camilo, harching his back to work out the kinks. Abuela kicked them out. His face froze, for this was the first time he had cracked a joke about his grandmother directly to her face, and Abuela hated that she was the reason for the fear and uncertainty that filled his features. It was the only way any of us would get any sleep, she replied, and all became Camilo's dominant expression when he realised she was joking back. The triplets exchanged incredulous glances, hardly able to believe their serious, no-nonsense mother had a sense of humour. Augustine and Felix didn't conceal their delight, and Mirabella beamed while her sisters and the rest of her cousins looked on in bewilderment. Abuela swore out to Dolores, whose forehead was pinched with discomfort. Are you feeling okay? Fine, Abuela, she muttered, rubbing her temples. Just a little headache. Why didn't you say anything sooner? Fussed Guglietta, moving to Dolores' side and taking her hand. I'll whip up a batch of irepes for you. You don't have to. I know. I want to. Knowing that anyone else would not linger, they hugged their family members goodnight. The embraces last a few beats longer, their grips tighter. When Julieta hugged her brother, she was careful not to squish the slumbering Antonio, cradled in his arms. I love you, Romano. I love you too, whispered Bruno. The smile she gave him lifted his heart, and it was buoyed further when Dolores kissed his cheek. 
Good night, Tio Bruno. Good night, Dolores. Ulietta and Dolores slept into the kitchen and the rest of the family began to head to bed after a round of hugs that expressed more than words ever could. Mirabella's tender, I love you, to Bruno caused tears to spring into his eyes. He managed to speak past the lump in his throat to return the sentiment. Camilo linked up with Mirabella and the two started up the stairs together. Bruno went past to pass Antonio to Peppa, but she shook her head. I think you should put your sub Bruno to bed. The smile that split across Bruno's face filled Abuela with both joy and grief. Grief for how long he had deprived himself of such happiness how she had been a barrier to his contentment. She had much to make up for, and though the healing process would no doubt be long and complex, they would emerge on the other side stronger than they had ever been before. She watched her family climb the stairs, watched as Felix set his hand against Bruno's shoulder, as Augustine put his arm around Luisa, as Peppa looped her arm through Isabella's, regarding them with pride and love in her heart. She waited until Ulietta and Dolores were ensconced in their rooms before retiring to bed. In their fatigue, in their swirl of intense emotions, no one noticed the extra, magic-infused door. When Isabella left her room the following morning, refreshed after a deep sleep, it was to see Antonio sitting in the middle of the second-floor balcony, still in his pyjamas, staring glumly at the nursery door. Isabella moved to sit next to her youngest cousin, her indigo dress pooling around her, her feet as she knelt low. It is too early to be this sad, said Isabella, gently pinching his cheek. What's wrong? We built Mirabelle her very own room, said Antonio tearfully, and the magic took it away. Why? Isabella's heart stuttered. What do you mean, the magic took it away? Antonio pointed at a place in the wall where Mirabelle's door should have been, but there was nothing but paint and solid brick. When Mirabelle brought back the magic, Casita went back to how it was, Antonio mis said miserably. She still has to sleep in the nursery. It's not fair. But she didn't say anything, exclaimed Isabella. But no, of course Mirabella wouldn't. She had spent ten years suffering in silence, settling into the nursery without a gripe, even as she rapidly outgrew the small space. When their home had to be built from scratch, Mirabelle had been delighted to design her own room. Isabella didn't want to imagine how crushed her little sister must have felt when she discovered it gone. And we were all so tired we didn't even notice, said Isabella tremulously. Righteous anger flared through her, and cacti erupted across the tiles. Antonio huddled in on himself to avoid being pricked. His eyes widened as his prima straightened, glaring up at Casita's ceiling. How could you do this to her? she demanded. Mirabelle gave us back our gifts. She brought back the magic. She brought back you. After everything she's done for us. After, after how horrible I've been to her. You couldn't even give her her own room? The tiles rattled and lifted, and Antonio squeaked as Casita hefted him over Isabella's cacti. Isabella shrieked as she too was taken off of her feet, the tiles rolling the cousins straight down the balcony. They were deposited in front of a door, and Isabella huffed in frustration. What was that for? The tiles tapped impatiently against the door, which shimmered with golden magic. With the revival of Casita, names were no longer carved into the wood, and Isabella struggled to pinpoint the owner. Antonio stood, peering at the engraved doorknob. Isa! he said excitedly. Look! He pointed at the butterfly etched into the metal. Isabella frowned. That's different. I think, I think this is Mira's door, said Antonio in a delight. Casita! Is that what you were trying to tell us? The railing tilted in affirmation. Tears of joy sprung into Weezer's eyes. Oh, Casita, thank you. She cleared her throat sheepishly. I'm, <clears throat> I'm sorry I spoke to you that way. A tile patted Isabella's ankle in response. Antonio bounced on his toes. We have to show Mirabelle. 
She'd be so happy. I'll wake the others, said Isabella. Go get her. Isabella began to bang on the bedroom doors, realising in the process that each doorknob bore a special symbol attributed to its owner. Antonio sprinted into the nursery and catapulted himself onto Mira's bed. The 15-year-old grunted, rapidly blinking her eyes as she was jolted out of her slumber. Whoa! She mumbled drowsily. Mirabelle, you have a door! Shouted Antonio, climbing onto her stomach. Mirabelle rubbed her eyes. I know, she <laughs> said with a yawn. You walked me into it, remember? Not that door, your door! Only a few seconds out of sleep, Mirabelle's brain wasn't still functioning at high full capacity. Oh, I don't mind, she said sluggishly. Sure, it'd be nice to have a bigger bedroom, but if the magic once conceived it to be how it was before, that's fine with me. Our family is whole again. That's all I need to be happy. No, Mira! The magic gave you your own room! Come on! Mirabelle sat up, squinting at Antonio, trying to make sense of what he was telling her through the fog in her brain. My own room, she echoed. Antonio grabbed Mirabella's hand, tugging her out of bed. The shelf above them vibrated, shaking Mirabelle's glasses over, over the edge. She seized them and shoved them onto her nose. She let Antonio drag her out of the nursery, her confusion only escalating when she saw her entire family was gathered around the right side of the second door. What's going on? I told you, said Antonio in exasperation. You have a door. Shush, Tonito. Just let her see, chided Peppa. Mirabelle stood in front of the shimmering door. Her brow furrowed. Oh, guys, I don't think it is, said Isabella, reaching out to squeeze her shoulders. Look at the doorknob. Mirabelle sh shifted to the butterfly, hardly able to believe what she was being told. But, but that doesn't make sense. I don't have a... Of course you do, said Julieta fiercely. And she cupped Mirabelle's cheeks. How could you say you don't have a gift? After all you've done. You are the reason the magic returned to us. I think I'm... Think about what I said. I meant it, said Bruno firmly. You're the real gift, Mirabelle. All this time, you've had the most important gift of all, said Abuela quietly. But I was too blind to see it. Go on, Mirabu said Augustine encouragingly. Mirabelle hesitated, approaching the door. Her door. Her fingers hovered over the doorknob. Hope and apprehension conflicted within her, preventing her from grasping the handle. She couldn't dispel the image of the golden magic receding, dissolving, leaving her cast in the shadows. Her breath caught in her throat, and she took an unconscious step back, but her retreat was halted by a steady hand between her shoulder blades. She looked up into Louisa's wet, burning hazel eyes. We've got you, sis, she said passionately. Abuela entwined her fingers with, with Mirabelle's. I will not fail you again, she whispered. Her voice was heavy with remorse, and Mirabella squeezed, injecting as much love as she could with the, into the motion. She inhaled deeply, and when she exhaled, she released her lingering insecurities, letting them drift back to where they belonged, the past. With her family flanking her, their support palpable, Mirabelle's blood pulsed with anticipation. She opened her door and crossed the threshold. Her bare feet padded along the bamboo flooring. Her mouth was agape, hazel eyes wide with stunned delight. She dimly registered the reactions of her family. Their gasps and happy cries just a tickle in her ears, barely heard over the excited pounding of her heart. On the right side of the room was a four-poster bed, the light blue quilt and magenta butterflies embroidered into the fabric. The bed's curtains matched the quilt, tied to each post with a thick golden ribbon. On both sides of the bed were small square tables made out of emerald. Perched on each surface was... Of one was a majestic bronze hourglass, set in a dark, glossy wooden base. On the other was a bronze scale. Behind the bed was a colourful, vibrant mural. 
a painted portrait of Mirabelle's family, an exact copy of the picture engraved onto the front door of Casita. On either side of the mural were three sets of blue painted bookshelves, lining the walls, packed full of leather bound volumes with golden tiles stamped onto the spines. On the other, on the left side of the room contained a vanity set, the colour scheme matching that of the bookshelves and the bed set. Two wide dresses sat at either side of a tall, bronze-framed mirror. Chameleons were designed into the metal, wrapping their way around the reflective glass. Camilo's murmured, Who oh, is this handsome devil? was halted by Peppa pinching his ear, her expression one of fond exasperation. The handles of the dresser drawers were in the shape of the sun. The splashes of yellow contrasted pleasantly against the blue, reminding Mirabelle of a clear sky. In the very middle of the room was a pile of red, yellow, orange, pink and purple puffy cushions, each one proudly displaying an embroidered animal. The end of a twisting wooden slide, which connected to the loft to the main floor, hovered an inch over the soft pillows. Antonio gave an eager squeal when he spotted the slide, but Bruno's quick reflexes allowed him to catch the child as he darted off. He hoisted the squirming five-year-old into his lanky limbs, and before Antonio could protest, his little face was squished with displeasure. Felix tapped his behind firmly. Aye, Antonio, you have your own slide. Let your prima explore her room, he said in a light, scolding whisper. You can play with her when she's ready. Antonio pouted, but let himself dangle from his Tio's grasp as Mirabelle continued to gaze around her room with slack-jawed awe. Ticking up most of the back wall was a picture window, with thick velvety blue curtains tied off to the sides with shivering shimmering silver tiebacks. Along the wood white tiled sill was a row of rainbow candles, some tall and thin, some short and fat, sitting prettily in bronze candle holders. Attached to the portion of wall behind the sill was a window seat that stretched along the length of one of the windows, padded with a thick rectangular burgundy cushion. There was a strip of bamboo flooring half a metre wide between the window seat and a pond. The water sparkled under the sunlight flooding through the glass and a Victoria Amazonica floated on the surface between lily pads, the white petals full and healthy. The pond was the same length as the window and surrounding the water were a variety of cacti, Catalina tria and As Alustro Maria, urns of pale pink orchids, white, or white orchids and yellow lilies were arranged between pots of cacti. All of them settled against the lip of the pond. It was all so beautiful. Mirabelle wasn't aware she was spinning in continuous circles, trying to drink in every little detail at once, till her father pressed his hand softly against her shoulders to still her. Careful, Nicorazon, he said with a laugh. You're going to make yourself dizzy. I can't help it. There's so much to look at, she exclaimed. I have a pond in my room. That's so awesome. And look at all these books. I don't even know what they're about, but I can't wait to read them. And a slide. I have a slide. Everything is amazing. She raced over to the ladder that led to the loft. When she was high enough to see past the railing, she shrieked with glee. What is it, Mavida? said Abuela, delighted at her granddaughter's excitement. Come see! insisted Mirabelle. The loft was so high above the main level that the only visible parts was the tall, light blue painted railing and the six semicircles stained glass windows. They were in a pattern formation, alternating between yellow glass with orange musical notes and opaque white glass with blue hearts. Mirabelle clambered through the gap in the railing, across the deep red rug with sound wave design, and to her dedicated embroidery space, eager to inspect her new supplies. Beneath the windows were low-hanging shelves, packed with spools of every possible coider of embroidery floss, pearl cotton, silk thread and ribbon. Below the shelves were sets of drawers, built out of dark wood, and the drawers contained sheets of fabric organised by material from cotton to lace to satin. On the other side of the loft, where the opening of the slide was located, were four barrels overflowing with yarn. Pushing up against the railing between the ladder and the slide, overlooking the bedroom floor, was a sewing table. 
On the table was a wicker basket of sweet-smelling medicinal herbs, that, and Mirabelle inhaled their scent. One by one, her family members entered the loft, and Ulietta clapped her hand over her heart. Oh, Mia! She said, her eyes glimmering. It's perfect! Camilo set his hands on his hips as he appraised the loft. We're never going to see you again, are we? He exclaimed in amusement. Nope! Chirped Mirabelle, flouncing over to throw an arm around his shoulders. You'll bring me my food, right? Careful, Mirabelle, you're starting to sound like me, said Bruno with a small, awkward laugh. Isabella bumped her hip against her tears. What's wrong with that? she asked sincerely, and was rewarded with a warm, shy smile. She turned to her sister and narrowed her eyes playfully. You better not kill any of your plants. Mirabelle grinned sheepishly. I'll do my best, but I'm thinking I'm going to need your help. I can definitely do that, promised Isabel. The room is completely you, said Dolores. She paused and added ruefully, I'm sorry you had to wait so long for it. Mirabelle's instinct was to deny, to claim that she didn't mind spending ten years in the nursery. But that wasn't the whole truth, and she was determined to end the days of lying about her pain of having her family hide their suffering. Well, some days it was hard, she admitted, tucking a strand of hair behind her ear. You all had these cool rooms, and I felt left out, alone. Oh, Mira, said Julieta, moving to embrace her daughter, with Augustine right behind her. I'm so sorry. You don't have to be sorry said Mirabelle, relaxing into the hold of her parents. Most days, I didn't really mind. She peeked over at Antonio with a grin. I did get to have the best roomie. Antonio beamed. Camilo scoffed. Yeah, I'm not offended by that at all. Me either, said Louisa with a deadpan expression. Augustine stroked his fingers through Mirabelle's hair. Tell me, Amor, what's your favourite part of your new room? All of the part that represent you guys, said Mirabelle cheerfully. What do you mean? asked Abuela in confusion. Mirabelle wiggled out of her parents' hug and skipped over to her sewing desk. See? Mama uses these herbs all the time, she said, pointing at the wicker basket. She spun on her heel and raised her arms to gesture at the stained glass. Windows or buff them. Dio Felix loves music, and Papa has the biggest heart of anyone I know. The rug is for Dolores. And the suns on my dresses are for Tia Papa. There are chameleons on my mirror, that's for Camilo. And the animal cushions are for Antonio, of course. The hourglass and scale next to my bed are for Tio Bruno and Luisa. And obviously the pond with all the plants is for Isabella. The candles on the windowsill represent you, Abuela. Oh, and I absolutely love the mural. But all of the it is really... Mirabelle cut herself off when she realised everyone was staring at her with tear-filled eyes. What's wrong? She asked in concern. Oh, mi vida, said Abuela with a hoarse, watery laugh. A room is a manifestation of not only one's gift, but what is most dear to you, most important. To have all of us be part of your room means you love your family more than anything. And I, I do not deserve such an honour. Neither do I. Isabella said with a soft sob. Peppa lowered her chin, a rain cloud forming above her. Camilo gripped her hand, tears starting to stream down his cheeks, and he could only give a jerky nod of agreement. Felix and Luisa looked ashamed, and Bruno started to rub his arm back and forth in an anxious manner, his fingers biting through his runa. I'm sorry, kid, he said in a choked voice. I've been a terrible deal. Stop! shouted Mirabelle, her own tears beginning to flow. Don't say so such things. You haven't been terrible. Saying you don't deserve the honour of being a part of my room, a part of me, means you don't deserve my love. And that's so wrong. She took a deep, hiccuping breath. I know you spent time thinking less of me, worried that I would be the downfall of our miracle. A miracle none of us understood. But I forgive you, okay? I forgive you because I know you never stopped loving me. 
even though that love was complicated. I never stopped loving you. She wanted to get more words out, to try to express them, but they didn't need to be burdened by guilt, that they would find a way to heal. But she couldn't get them out. Her throat thick and her tongue heavy, and her vision blurred with tears. So she moved forward blindly, grabbing a hold of Dolores and Louisa, who were the closest to her. Louisa immediately smushed them both in a hug, and it wasn't long before the rest of the family joined. Bruno moved hesitantly, uncertainly, until Camilo grabbed him into the embrace. As Isabella held her grandmother's hand, her skin blotchy with tears, and led her into the family hug. Oh, Mira, Abuela said with deep affection, cradling her granddaughter's cheek. Our beautiful Mariposa. Cold rain drizzled from the grey cloud above Peppa's head, and she silently clucked her tongue in exasperation. Lo siento, Mirabel. It's okay, it's just water, assured Mirabel. It's like Tio Bruno said, you gotta let it go. She reached out for Bruno, who gripped her hand tightly as she basked in the adoration in his green eyes. They lingered in each other's hold for a moment, before slowly separating, the eyes a bit drier their souls a little lighter and their love burning. I'll move your stuff, sis, declared Louisa. No, no, we'll do it, said Augustine, putting his arm around over his wife's shoulders. See, si, as we did for you and Isa, said Julietta fondly, and then I'll make all your favourites for breakfast. That sounds great, said Mirabel happily, but there's something very important we have to do first. She smiled knowingly at her little cousin. We gotta go down the slide. Antonio whooped and charged at Mirabel, grabbing her hand. Mirabel plopped down at the top of the slide, bundled Antonio in her lap, and together they whizzed down to the main floor. Dolores and Isabella were quick to follow, laughing and holding hands as they zipped out of view. Bruno nervously started a backtrack for the ladder, but his sisters squeezed his, seized his arms and dragged him towards the slide. They paused for a moment to let him frantically knock on the wooden railings and cross himself before they vanished into a tangle of limbs. Felix extended his hand to Abuela with a charming smile. Abuela laughed and accepted it, and together they whooshed down the slide. Louisa easily picked up Augustine and Camilo, the latter batting her arm in mock protest. They zoomed down to join the rest of their family, landing with an oof in the thick cushions. They were all laughing, splayed out amongst the pillows, and Mirabel grinned broadly, every fibre of her being being filled with joy. Though nothing would ever make her happier than having her whole family here. Her new room was a pretty nice bonus. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that. I really like that. As much as I like the Mirabel Sweet 16 by Camille Calique, this is really nice too. It's all about how, you know, well, as I just recited, Mirabelle gets a room. I like the idea of her actually getting one. My personal theory is that the nursery turned into a room for her. But never mind. Anyway, have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Bye, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Bye!